The racing year is 1970 and a new decade has dawned with increasing interest and commercial sponsorship of Formula One and more European and South American drivers taking on the big names, Stuart, Hicks and Brabham. Jochen Rint had made his breakthrough with Lotus, while a new name in March was taking on the established teams. In sports car racing, the way was clear for Porsche to dominate. The 1970 Grand Prix season opened in Africa and among the driver changes, Jackie Ix had rejoined Ferrari. Graham Hill was driving for Rob Walker, having recovered sufficiently from his broken legs in 1969 to continue racing. Jean-Pierre Beltoise and Henri Pescarolo were with Matra, using their own V12 engines. World champion Jackie Stewart was debuting the new march, alongside Chris Amon and Joe Siffert in factory cars, and Mario Andretti in an STP entry. John Surtees had a McLaren, waiting for his own car to be completed. Graham Hill had only decided to race two days earlier. Frank Williams retained Piers' courage, but switched to a new Dallara-designed De Tomaso chassis fitted with a Cosworth engine. The Robin Hurd-designed march had the first two places on the grid, Jackie Stewart and Chris Amon. Jack Brabham was third. Stewart took the lead when the 23 cars roared away, closely followed by Jackie Ix in the Ferrari. On lap four, Rint and Brabham collided, and Jack said, I spent the next four laps looking at the wheel to see if it would come off. Then I thought, to hell with it, let's have a go. Boltois, Oliver and McLaren were ahead of Brabham, while Eamon and Rint dropped down the order. Brabham quickly recovered and overtook all four drivers ahead of him. Jack Brabham and Ron Toranak had built their first monocoque chassis, the BT-33, and ran the car in turquoise and yellow colours. March was founded by Max Mosley, Robin Hurd, Alan Rees and Graham Coker, solely to manufacture and sell racing cars. In their first race, they had five cars on the grid. Stewart's 10-second lead was lost as 43-year-old Brabham closed in. Brabham passed Stewart on lap 19, setting a new lap record in the process. From then on, it was the Australian's race. McLaren's Denny Halm overtook Stewart to hold second place to the end. The order remained unchanged to the finish, with Jean-Pierre Beltoise the only other driver unlapped in fourth, after Bruce McLaren and John Surtees had gone out with engine trouble. Jackie Hicks suffered a similar fate, while his Le Mans winning partner, Jackie Oliver, went out with gearbox trouble in his BRM. Jack Brabham won the 80-lap, 328-kilometre race by 18 seconds from Denny Halm, with Jackie Stewart third. In fourth was Jean-Pierre Beltoise, and fifth, John Miles for Lotus. Graham Hill finished a heroic sixth. Due to the pain in one of his legs, at one stage he had to operate all three pedals with one foot. This from a driver who had been told he might not be able to drive at all. The Sports Car World Championship, known as the International Championship for Makes, began at Daytona. A 24-hour race won by Pedro Rodriguez and Finland's Leo Kinnonen in the Porsche 917, followed by Sabring, won by Ignazio Giunti and Nino Vaccarella in the new Ferrari 512S. The BOAC 1,000-kilometre race at Brands Hatch was round three. After Barry Smith crashed his Lola T70 on the front straight and was helped away from the wreck, the yellow caution flags were waved. Pedro Rodriguez worked his way up from seventh on the grid to take the lead, passing Ferrari's Chris Amon. A big slide by the Courage de Adamich Alfa Romeo T33. The yellow flags were out again. Clark, of course, Nick Syrett didn't think that Rodriguez was paying much attention to these and called the Mexican in for a talking to. Suitably chastened, Rodriguez charged out of the pits and proceeded to put on a memorable display. 
Fishtailing the four and a half litre 917 around the Kent circuit, Rodriguez and Kinnanen won by five laps in a wet weather driving display that's considered one of the best ever. And it wasn't achieved against make-weight opposition. Second were Denny Hulm and Vic Elford, and third, Hans Hermann and Richard Atwood, all in works-entered 917s. A three-litre Porsche, driven by Hans Lehner of Finland and Gies van Lennep of Holland, was fourth. Formula One teams gathered at Harama for the Spanish Grand Prix. John Surtees was still working on his new car. Jack Brabham was on pole with McLaren's Denny Hulm and the dark blue march of Jackie Stewart on the outside of the front row. The second row featured Jean-Pierre Beltoise in the Matra and Pedro Rodriguez in the new BRM P153. The third row was made up of Chris Amon, Jackie Ix and Jochen Rint in the Lotus 49. Jackie Stewart led away in the march, followed by a fast-starting X. Soon after the start, Jackie Oliver's BRM collided with Jackie X's Ferrari, and both cars caught fire. Despite the flames and fuel, the race carried on. BRM called in Rodriguez to check the suspension, as Oliver reported an axle failure. Oliver escaped with minor injuries and Ix suffered a few burns. Stewart had taken the lead and he remained there all afternoon. Bruce McLaren picked up second place with Mario Andretti's STP March finishing third. Jackie Stewart had given March its first Formula One victory in only its second World Championship event and the Scot now led the championship from Jack Brabham. Jack Brabham arrived in Monaco in a determined mood. Graham Hill was hoping to add to his five Monaco victories. Pole position went to Jackie Stewart with Chris Amon alongside. Row two had Denny Hulm and Jack Brabham with Jackie Ix and Matra's Jean-Pierre Beltoise sharing the third row. Jackie Stewart took the lead with Amon, Brabham, Ix and Beltoise chasing. Beltoise found a way past Ix, who stopped on lap 12 with a drive shaft failure. Beltoise was out on lap 22 with transmission problems. Brabham scrambled past Eamon for second. Stewart was forced into the pits with a broken rotor arm on lap 26. That put Brabham in the lead from Eamon and Holm. The 1967 world champion had gearbox trouble and slipped behind Rint and Joe Siffert. On lap 61, Eamon stopped with a rear suspension failure. At the three-quarter mark, the order was Brabham, Rint, Pescarolo, Siffert, Holm and Hill. With 10 laps to go, there were 14 seconds between Brabham and Rint, and Brabham seemed almost certain of victory. But the Austrian put on one of the most furious chases ever seen in Monaco, knocking five seconds off Brabham's lead in the six laps, four more on the 77th lap, and when they crossed the last lap line, he was only one and a half seconds behind. Then, as Brabham appeared first out of the tunnel under the pigeon chute, he seemed still in control of his position, but he failed to get round the gasworks hairpin, locking his brakes while lapping Joe Siffert only 200 metres from the finish, and Rint flashed past to win. Brabham managed to extricate himself and still come in second, followed by Francis Henri Pescarolo in the Matra. While a delighted Rint celebrated with Prince Rainier and Princess Grace, an extremely annoyed Brabham had the consolation of retaking the championship lead. The World Sports Car Championship reached round six at Spa, after more wins for Porsche at Monza and in the Targa Florio. 
Jackie Ix and John Surtees qualified their Ferrari 512 S third behind the Porsches. In wet conditions on the run through Eau Rouge, Pedro Rodriguez and Joe Siffert went fender to fender. They were supposed to be teammates, but in fact were fierce rivals. After the first hour, Ix took the lead and held it for 11 laps, but he couldn't match the acceleration and speed of the Porsches, and Brian Redmond passed the Belgian to take the lead. Just after the halfway mark, the Rodriguez Kinnunen 917 retired with a gearbox failure, and that left the way clear for Siffert and Redmond to score a comfortable win. A real splash and dash for the Peter Shetty Arturo Mazzario 512S. The Ferrari went on to finish seventh. Joe Siffert and Brian Redmond won the race by almost a lap from the X30s Ferrari, giving Porsche an unbeatable lead in the World Championship. June the 2nd saw the tragic loss of Bruce McLaren. The popular New Zealander died while testing a Can-Am sports car at the Goodwood circuit. He was 32 years old and left behind a wife and daughter. Bruce won four Grand Prix in a long career and established a successful company that continues to this day. The team had to regroup and led by Denny Hulm, who himself was suffering from burns sustained at Indianapolis and Teddy Mayer, continued their program of Grand Prix and Can-Am racing. Only a few days later, the teams gathered at Spa for the Belgian Grand Prix and McLaren wasn't present. Jackie Stewart was on pole with Jochen Rint and Chris Amon alongside. Rint took off into the lead, but Amon was able to get ahead during the first lap, with Stewart also getting ahead of the Lotus. Pedro Rodriguez then whipped his new BRM P153 into the lead in the fifth lap. New Swedish driver Ronnie Peterson spun his privately entered march exiting La Source. Chris Amon briefly nosed his STP march in front on lap 8, but Rodriguez responded quickly. Stewart found himself under attack from Brabham, but Blackjack went off at Malmody when he found an oily rag tangled up in his pedals. Stewart, Rint and Brabham all retired. It was a popular victory for 27-year-old Rodriguez, whose last Grand Prix victory was in 1967. It was also a proud comeback to Formula One racing for BRM, which hadn't won a Grand Prix since Monaco in 1966. Chris Amon was second and Frenchman Jean-Pierre Beltoise third. The 1970 24 Hours of Le Mans was the 38th Grand Prix d'Endurance. The traditional Le Mans start was replaced by a variant in which the drivers were already in their cars. There were four Ferrari 512 S's and five Porsche 917 K's, plus another nine of the 12 cylinder sports cars entered by privateers. A spin for the Alfa of Zaccoli and Facetti. Rain made the driving extremely difficult and many cars dropped out after accidents or mechanical breakdowns. Mike Halewood ran his Porsche into the Alpha, ending his race. Also stopped in rain was the Deschamel and Paro 911. The Hans Hermann Richard Atwood 917, followed by the brightly painted hippie Porsche of Gerard Larousse and Willy Kausen. Most of the Ferraris were eliminated when they ran into each other a few hours into the race. Jackie X managed to bring the remaining Ferrari up to second at midnight, but tragically, Ix had an accident that killed a marshal at the Ford chicane. Jack Brabham and Francois Sever led the prototypes in their Matra Roadster, but the V12s were using too much oil and had to retire. All this left the 4.5-litre 917 of Hans Hermann and Richard Atwood, entered by the Peach family under the Salzburg banner, well clear of the hippie car of La Russe and Kausen. After many years of class wins, Porsche had won Le Mans outright for the first time. After being paraded in a tip truck, Hans Hermann announced his retirement from racing. <laughs> Jochen Rint won the Dutch Grand Prix in the new Lotus 72, increasing his championship lead, but tragically Piers Courage perished in a fiery crash. 
Jackie X and Jean-Pierre Beltois, both in 12-cylinder cars, were fastest in practice for the French Grand Prix around the 8-kilometer Clermont-Ferrand circuit. They then dominated the first half of the race. Following were the marches of Chris Amon and Jackie Stewart, Denny Holmes McLaren, Henri Pescarolo in the second Matra, and Jochen Rindt in the Lotus. Ix was chased by Beltoise for 14 laps until the Belgian's Ferrari had engine trouble and was forced to retire. Beltoise streaked ahead and seemed certain of victory for Matra. Jackie Stewart was holding third place until his march developed ignition trouble and he finished ninth. Jochen Rindt, driving like a champion in the Lotus 72, began to gain on Beltoise. He passed the French driver on the 26th lap. Beltoise had a slow puncture and had to retire. Second, seven seconds behind Rint, was Chris Amon in the works march. Jack Brabham broke the lap record on his way to third, with Denny Halm fourth. Rint now had 27 championship points, with Stewart and Brabham equal second on 19. Jochen Rint was fastest in qualifying for the British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch, with Jack Brabham and Jackie Ix sharing the front row. Jackie Oliver was fourth in the BRM, ahead of Denny Holmes McLaren. Graham Hill was a lowly 22nd, just behind John Surtees. Ix took the lead from Brabham at Druids after going through Paddock Hill Bend side by side. For six laps, the Ferrari stayed ahead, but at the start of lap seven, the car suffered a transmission failure. Rint challenged Brabham, and the Austrian emerged in front. But with 11 laps to go, Rint missed a gear. In a moment, Brabham was ahead, and it looked as though the race was over as the canny Australian pulled away. But on the last lap, the Brabham Cosworth slowed. Jack was out of fuel. Rint was able to close up the 13 seconds he was behind to win as the Brabham trickled towards the line. Halm was too far back to grab second and had to settle for third place. More drama followed with Rint being disqualified for having too high a rear wing, but two and a half hours later the Austrian was reinstated. Jochen and his wife Nina on the Brands podium. After three wins in a row, Rint was well ahead of a disappointed Jack Brabham. At the last minute, the German Grand Prix was transferred from the Nürburgring to Hockenheim. Jochen Rint chats to Graham Hill. Jackie X took pole position from Rint. Clay Regazzoni was an impressive third quickest in the second Ferrari. X went into the lead with Rint behind him and they were joined by Sivert, Regazzoni and Eamon to form the leading group. Jack Brabham's race was over on lap four, and Jackie Oliver's BRM was pushed into retirement. Ix, Rint, Pescarolo and Eamon diced for lap after lap, while Siffert dropped away. On lap 31, Regazzoni's engine gave up, and five laps later Eamon suffered a similar fate, and so it was left as a straight fight between Rint and Ix. It was only two laps from the finish that Rint was able to make a break and the pair crossed the line, separated by only 0.7 of a second.
Denny Hulm was third, some 80 seconds behind, with newcomer Emerson Fittipaldi an impressive fourth and Rolf Stommelen fifth. It was Jochen Rint's fourth consecutive victory, and as the teams headed for his home circuit in Austria, he was 20 points clear in the World Championship. The Austrian Grand Prix was held at the new Österreich Ring, and Jochen Rint took pole. Francois Seva in the second Ken Tyrrell march. Ferrari's Clay Regazzoni qualified on the front row alongside Rint, with Ix on row two with Jackie Stewart. There was a huge crowd for the race, but they were to be disappointed as Regazzoni and Ix charged into the lead while Rint went out early with an engine failure. On the second lap, Regazzoni waved Ix ahead and for the rest of the afternoon, the scarlet cars dominated. Holding third place was the Matra of Jean-Pierre Beltoise, with Rolf Stommelen fourth for Brabham and Pedro Rodriguez fifth for BRM. Jackie Stewart and Jack Brabham had to retire with mechanical problems. Rolf Stommelen secured third place when he took advantage of an enforced pit stop by Jean-Pierre Beltoise's Matra, only three laps from the finish. Ix and Regazzoni swept across the finishing line within a second of each other. Hundreds of exultant Italian fans spilled out onto the track and for some minutes race officials were unable to carry on with the award ceremony. The championship table remained virtually unaltered after the four leading contenders didn't finish. In qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix, Jochen Rint's Lotus crashed heavily. Rint was taken to hospital but had already passed away. He was the third Formula One driver to die in 1970 after Bruce McLaren and Piers Courage. Clay Regazzoni continued Ferrari's revival with a six second win over Jackie Stewart. In Canada, Ferrari scored another 1 2 and Jackie Ix moved to second in the championship. With two races to go, Ix needed to win both to take the title. Brazil's Emerson Fittipaldi won the US Grand Prix for Lotus in only his fourth start. Fittipaldi's win meant that Jochen Rindt couldn't be overtaken in the Drivers' Championship. Jackie Ix led home another Ferrari 1-2 in the final race of a tragic season. Third place went to Denny Hull. Jochen Rindt was declared the sport's first and, so far, only posthumous world champion in the very year he intended to retire from the sport. The Austrian had brought style and aggression to Formula One. Jack Brabham retired at the end of 1970, family demands overcoming his intention to keep racing. The old guard was being replaced by ambitious newcomers.